today, why don't we maybe go back to the questions that I began to ask in that video a few short moments ago. If you're here next year at this time and you find yourself in the same room, how cool would it be to say, hey, I'm in the best shape that I've ever been in my life. How neat would it be to say, hey, I'm more connected with God than I've ever been at any other time in my life. How amazing would it be maybe if, you're, if your marriage is in a bit of a struggle right now and you're in this room to say, I'm at the best place I've ever been in my relationship at this stage of my life. You know, all of those things are actually possible. Do you realize that? They're not guaranteed by any means, for sure, right? But if you have the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of God's word, and you begin to apply some different things in your life, the results that you could have at the end of this year could be far different than what you're experiencing right now. Maybe 2017 was a good year for you in many ways, and maybe other areas of your life, it was a struggle. We have a saying in recovery circles, if you do the same thing over and over again, expecting different results, it's called insanity. And that's what we so often do. We, we just wish it into existence. Oh, and you just keep doing the same thing and then you get to a later part in your life and you're like, man, where did all that time go? Why did I miss out on it? Why is my relationship still struggling? Why is my spiritual life still struggling? Because we're repeating the same stuff over and over again. We need to do some different things. So my job description as a pastor, it says in scripture, is to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. To equip to provide wisdom, knowledge, understanding of God's word, to try to present it in such a way that you can apply it. And that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna tell you something. I'm not gonna give you a whole bunch of profound truths today. I'm gonna hopefully speak the truth and love to you. And if you apply God's word in the areas that I'm talking about, you can have some profound results down the road. But the key to everything in life is not just knowing you know, we know what to do in 90% of the areas of our life. It comes down to application of God's word and application of biblical principles. That's where the disconnect is. So when we introduce these E's, equip, that's my job, to equip you with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, to execute with regularity on God's word. And if you do, I can pretty much assure and promise you that you're going to excel. Your life will be far different. Even if things are going bad, you'll be closer and more connected with God and be able to deal with those situations in a stronger fashion where you will have peace that surpasses all understanding even in the midst of the challenges of life. I hope that's the kind of life you want. Yes, I certainly do. So I look forward to diving into God's word with you today and seeing what it says. Father, we thank you and praise you. We give you glory today. You are an amazing God that has brought us through an amazing year, and we can't thank you enough for all that you've done, for the lives that we've seen saved, for the people we've seen changed, for the ministries we've been able to launch, for the people we've been able to impact, not just in Jacksonville, but all around the world. Father, as we venture into this next season of the Life of Journey Church, we believe that you have big, bold, audacious plans for the people of Journey Church and for this city. We thank you for allowing us to be a part of it, Lord God. We can't thank you enough. As we hear your word today, would you open up our ears so that we could hear it plainly? Would you give us eyes to see? But all the more importantly, would you motivate us by the power of your Holy Spirit to put these words into practice in our everyday lives? Our desire is to please you. Our desire is to worship you. Our desire is to give you glory. So, Lord, we ask you to move in our hearts and minds today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. So before we make it personal and start to talk about us and our relationship with God, let's talk for just a second about the vision that God's given us for this year. It's a pretty audacious one. It's going to take all of us to be on track. It's going to take all of us to be on point. We believe that God birthed in the heart of the leadership of Journey Church that he would like to see Journey see 365 people come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior during 2018. I get excited about that. I don't know about you, but that's why we planted the church. That's what our heart is, to see people come to know Jesus and grow up to be fully devoted followers of the Lord. That's why churches in general should exist. And 365 people would be just a big, amazing, audacious, incredible number. 
like with everything that we're talking about today, you can have a dream, you can have a vision, you can say, I want the best marital relationship that I could possibly have a year from now, but if you're not willing to go to small groups, if you're not willing to go to counseling, if you're not willing to put in the work in your relationship, your marriage might stink and next year you might be divorced. Does that make sense? So I'm trying to connect vision with strategy and reality, right? So when we cast this big, bold vision, if we do the same thing we did last year, do you think we're going to see 365 people get saved? It's not going to happen. We saw a lot of people get saved, but not 365 people get saved. So that means we need to do some things differently. It means in the natural, we're going to have to see some results. So one of those things is in the, before Easter, we need to be running 1,000 in average weekly attendance. Right now, we've been averaging a bit over 800. That means we need to see some growth in order for these numerics to be able to take place and see it happen. Because if you're not reaching new people, if you're not connecting with new people, if you're not living on mission and you're not out there sharing the good news of the gospel with others, how would we ever see 365 people get saved? So we can cast a vision, we could do marketing, we could do advertising, we could do things that might bring people through the doors. But you know what the best thing is? When people who love Jesus share the good news of the gospel with other people and tell them about it, there's nothing better than that. When you tell people about what God has done in your life, let me tell you that is magnetic, that is attractive, that is amazing, and you will see people come to know the Lord if you will share the good news of the gospel with them. I promise you it'll happen, and you in turn will also get great joy in watching what's happening, right? So you've done an amazing job at that. So we put some statistics to it. If we wanted to see 365 people come to know the Lord, it means we need to have about 25 families visit Journey Church on each and every week. That means about 100 visitors per month. During the month of December, you guys were absolutely amazing. We had 85 first-time families come through the doors of Journey. Give yourselves a big, bold round of applause. That's absolutely amazing. You're almost there already, and we haven't even started Vision 365. So my charge to you in that is keep it up, keep making a difference, keep moving forward. Our God is faithful and he will do this because I know we're in his will. How do you know if you're in God's will? Are you functioning and flowing and what is important to him? So what do I mean by that? God is most glorified when people come to know him as their Lord and Savior. See, in the natural, we as human beings, we love all the fluffy stuff at times. It's awesome to be in a spirit-filled worship service. It's awesome to see God move. It's awesome to see people get healed. It's awesome to see and experience the God goosebumps, right? Those are always amazing moments that we certainly enjoy and can be an aspect of worship unto God, but they're not the end. They're a means to the end. They all are there so that people would come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, right? That's what it's all about. So if you focus your life on seeing people come to know Jesus, you will always be in God's will, right? So I know that God wants to see this vision fulfilled even more so than we do. He is most glorified when people get saved. So we want to push towards that end. So yes, there's some things that we need to do in the natural. Some of them also have to do with finances. Let me tell you just how good God is even as we gaze back at last year. So if we look at last year, we had a base level goal. We had to survive as a church by getting $900,000 in as a church. That was the survival level so that we could do all of our basics of ministry so that we could reach people around the world with the good news of the gospel so that we could keep the lights on so that we could have youth so that we could do everything that we've been doing. We had a dream goal of $1 million. That would have just been over the top. How amazing to see God show up if that were to happen. Do you know that God had us close the year out with $994,500 in offerings? Give God a little bit of glory. Just amazing. How could we not trust God, right? Think about that even in your own life. I all too often operate from a spirit of fear, even in the area of finances. Thankfully, I have some good friends in my life that call me out on that. They love me enough to call me out on that. They love me enough to go and tell me that, hey, you have a spirit of fear where you should have no fear in that area. I speak to the men for just a moment. If you don't have somebody in your life like that right now, you need to have somebody in your life right now who can call you out on that. I want to encourage you men to be here next Saturday morning at 9 a.m. for Man Church. I can tell you what's not going to happen. It's not going to happen that we're going to create some weird false accountability group where we put you with somebody that you've never met before and we say, you guys got to spill your guts out to one another. That's not going to happen in Jesus' name. 
I can promise you that. You can know that it's going to be a safe zone. We're not going to put anything weird on you, but what we are going to do is have an inspiring message from uh, Donovan Darius. He's going to share God's word with us and encourage us to press forward and apply the kinds of things that we're even talking about right now in today's message. Ladies, please kick them out of the house that morning. Kick them out, send them over here to Man Church and watch what God does. Maybe from that we'll develop some good, godly, loving relationships with other people where we could hold ourselves accountable if we don't have those today. But I'm longing to see that happen in each of our lives during the course of 2018, but we're not going to do it in some weird, fake way. We're going to allow God to move in that in Jesus' name. Can I get an amen? amen? Now that I've totally lost where I was going because I sidetracked myself. God is good. Let's bring it back to where he wants to take us today. Our life verse for the years found in 1 Thessalonians 5, 23. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. AV, if you could just keep that up for a little while. I wanna break this down with you for a second. This is the spirit of our God speaking to us about what he wants for you. Think of it as a prayer for you. How amazing is that? It says, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. I spoke about the fact that I too often operate out of a spirit of fear instead of a spirit of faith, right? We have the God, the Prince of Peace, the creator of peace, the creator of the universe who loves us, a divine peace that surpasses all understanding that is available to us. How many areas of your life are you just operating out of fear all the time? How many in this very room, you're probably having to take these little pills all the time to try to keep yourself out of anxiety? Can I tell you something? I'm not bucking the doctors. If that's what they do, I'm not going to tell you no, but that's not God's best plan for your life. If you have access to the Prince of Peace, why you got to eat Xanax every day? Come on, Jesus. Do you hear what I'm saying? We'll link that back to the health and fitness stuff in just a moment, but... I'm not trying to be weird here, but why would a group of people who are believers have to be dependent on something like that, right? God wants to break through. He wants to bring healing. It's a holistic sense. That's why we're talking about this thing today, spirit, soul, and body. But the God of peace himself wants to sanctify you completely. Why are many of us not at peace? Let's be honest. Let's get on the scale this morning. You're living in habitual sin. There's stuff going on in your life that you know is not of God. You're asking God to bless you, yet you're out there smoking dope every day. You're out there sleeping with somebody you shouldn't be sleeping with. You're out there doing stuff you're not supposed to be doing. You're out there lying. You're out there cheating. You're out there talking. You're out there. You don't hear this stuff in some other churches. Come on, Jesus. We're going to be honest here, right? We got to get on the scale, right? I don't say this to put you down. I say this because the Prince of Peace wants to set you free. The Prince of Peace wants to bring you freedom and hope. You can hold on to your junk and stay the same way. That's fine. You'll hurt yourself. You'll hurt those around you. They'll continue to suffer. You'll continue to suffer when you have access to the Prince of Peace that wants to forgive you, that wants to love on you, that wants to put people around you that'll care for you. So you could continue to go on in your misery and your sin. How can you expect God to bless you if you're going to continue to live that way? Would you repent today? Would you run from your sin and run into the arms of the one who loves you, the one who cares for you, the one who died for you? He loved you that much that he doesn't want to see you continue on in that. So it says we need to be sanctified, that we need to be a holy people, a people who are set apart for God's own glory, a people who live differently than those that we see out there in the world. It's a high calling, it's a high bar, but it's God himself who empowers us and God himself who is praying for you. Did you read that? He's praying for you. It says his desire is that you would be whole in spirit, soul, and body. So let's distinguish that for just a moment. To be whole in spirit. Get on the scale again for a second. I asked the question earlier, do you feel like you're connected with God right now? Or is it a chore? Like, like, how's your devotional life with him, maybe as a barometer? Are you excited like you were when you first met the person that you love to get into his word and read about him and talk to him? Are you excited to prayer or is it a chore? Are you just getting by in that area of your life and there's no vibrancy? 
He says his desire is that you would be connected with him in spirit, that you'd be walking and flowing in the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, that you would know his word. How do you get to know him? How do you change? You have to dive into his word. We're going to give you some tools to be able to do that. You have to be a person of prayer. When you hear about the prayer meeting, man, go there. If you want to live different and you're wondering why your life is the same and you ain't praying, come on, Jesus. You got to go and do some things differently or you're not going to get different results. You got to prioritize some different things in your life. If you want to be here next year saying, man, this was the best year of my life where I was connected with God. Not in some weird Joel Osteen kind of way. I love Joel, but come on, Jesus. You're going to live your best life now. Come on, Jesus. You know, like, no, he talks about living your best life now, but he never talks about the sin that's holding you back. That's the only problem I have with Joel. Yes, I want the best life now, but yes, part of that comes by ditching the sin that ensnares you and holds you back, right? Spirit, soul. What's the difference in your soul from your spirit? Your spirit or your soul is basically your mind, your will, and your emotions. Are your emotions ravaged all the time? Are you living out of a spirit of fear? Are you up and down? Are you freaking out? The Bible says that he wants you to have a sound mind. How do you get a sound mind? By the washing of the word, is what it says. By knowing the word, by applying the word. So if you're always an emotional wreck and you're living in chaos and you're a crisis junkie, that's not God's best for your life. He says he operates from a spirit of peace, right? Not crisis. As an addict, I all too often lived as a crisis junkie. We got to go visit our son. We've been very vocal about that. He's in a treatment center. He is doing good. Please keep praying for him. It's going amazing so far. And we, we went to the counseling, and this is what they were talking about yesterday. And my family can so relate to the crisis that an addict creates. But in all our lives, we tend to have a lot more crisis than we really should that is self-perpetuating and self-creating that is not God's plan for our life. So spirit, soul, and body. He wants us to be whole in spirit. He wants our mind, our will, and our emotions to be sound. And he wants us to be, believe it or not, he wants us to be physically fit. He wants us to have a level of nutrition and health that is scarce in our generation. If you look at the statistics on obesity and, and the ways that the world markets food to us and the ways that we eat and the cancer problems and the GMOs and all the crazy stuff that I frankly don't know all that much about, but they do in the back back there, hallelujah, Jesus, hook up with the 20 or so of those people that are back there that could be life coaches to you, that could help you, guide you in this direction of your life. Um, at a base level, if, if you are not having the right nutrition and McDonald's is your drug dealer, come on Jesus, right? <laughs> then don't be shocked if you find yourself at Orange Park Hospital with Pastor Eric who hates to go to the hospital <laughs> praying over you, trying to relieve the spirit of the Big Mac in Jesus' name, right? <laughs> it's not going to happen, right? Now, I'm first and foremost and guilty in this. I'm not saying I'm not in the same boat with many who are in here. For those of you who are doing great in this area, would you help coach others? Would you launch small groups that are fitness-oriented here? Would you help us who are struggling? Would you help us be accountable? Would you inspire us? Would you encourage us? Would you help us? Because the, the battle is real. You know, we talk about equip, right? All of us know how to eat, right? We, we know what we should be doing. It, the problem is in the execution. Um, I don't, why do I not have a problem executing on eating bad food every day? I just don't know. Why, why couldn't that be like the easy route, right? Uh, I've got to change my taste buds and the way that I live and the way that I eat. And that's a, that's a goal that I have for me this year that I'm, I'm certainly wanting to apply. Because if we want to see these dreams come to pass of seeing 365 people get saved, do you think we're going to do that if we don't have the energy to do that? You know, the devil uses some of these as a tool. If he could keep you physically unhealthy, keep you physically tired, keep your mind messed up, keep us dying from the bad stuff that we're eating and the way that we're living, then guess what? When you go to open up the word, you're going to get tired and you're going to fall out before you ever even get into it. We've all experienced that, right? How do you have the energy to go out there and go on an outreach and go out and try to help reach people and vibrantly serve if we're not healthy, right? So that's why we've taken the time and the energy at the beginning of this year to try to round up a bunch of people that we think are great people in the back. So after the service, I told you it's just going to be very practical. The message will be very short. I want you to get up from here and go back there and meet some of them. 
be inspired and not just inspired, but apply the things that they're talking about. Because if they do, we could be the fittest church in Jacksonville a year from now. That'd be amazing. That would be really cool. Not just because we want to be fit and look like ripped people. That'd be great. I'm too old for that. Come on, Lord. I'm just too old for that. But how amazing would it be to be able to enjoy your elder years because you've done right in those younger years for, for so many of us. And many of us got a lot of making up to do, but I, I, I do speak this believing that this is God's word for us for this year, that we would be whole in spirit, soul, and body and be kept blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, he's coming back. And while we're here, he wants us to do everything that we can to tell the world about this amazing God we serve. Thank you for keeping that up there, Jim. I appreciate it. Let's continue on in God's word. Let's talk about equipping for a moment. Spiritual equipping. How do we begin to apply this stuff? How can we put it into practice? Equipping means to gain knowledge, to gain information. It doesn't always lead to application. We want to pray that it would lead to application because application leads to transformation. When you apply God's word, then you see the transformation begin to happen. So how are we going to equip you for a spiritual journey this year? We're going to go through an epic study throughout the course of this year. It's going to be a one-year study of the Bible. We've programmed every single weekend through much prayer, through much conversation, through much planning, where every single ministry in Journey Church, from the children's ministry to the teens to the adult teachings, is going to be aligned around 50 main topics that give you a great glimpse of God's story from Genesis to Revelation. It's going to really start next week. We're going to kick off and talk about the Bible and its vibrancy and applying God's word. It's going to be a great way to kick it off. And then we're going to kind of start in Genesis. We're going to talk about creation and fall. And we're going to hear about Exodus and how God parted the Red Sea and David and Goliath and Jesus being born. It's going to be an amazing story because God is an amazing God. So for 50 weeks after this one, we're going to get different glimpses of the Bible that are going to empower us to understand the fullness of God's glory and apply the gospel to our everyday lives. So how's that going to work? The weekend teachings are going to be centered around that. The youth teachings are going to be centered around the same story. The children's teachings will be centered around the same story. For those of you who have kids in kids' church, you're going to be receiving parent sheets that'll be topical, that you can discuss the same kinds of things we're learning as adults with your children around the dinner table or on the ride home. You'll be able to ask them and it'll be in alignment. Our teens and our youth are gonna have the same kind of resources and the same kind of understanding. And then many of our small groups are gonna go off this big idea concept where if you really wanna dive in deep and you wanna get with others around the same topic, you could study whatever the weekend message was. You could study it at a much greater degree and have discussion surrounding it in a small group context. So we're trying to line the entire church so that we could grow spiritually more connected with God. One of the foundations of that is going to be reading his word. So we're going to have two Bible reading plans. We're going to release them every single Monday. On Monday, it'll be released on our Facebook page. And one of them is the aggressive Bible reading plan where you read every verse, every dot, every chapter. And the other one's the wimpy one. And I'm teasing. The other one is going to be a little bit more attainable. It's hard to read the whole Bible through in a year. It's aggressive. I want to challenge some of you to do it. Flow with it. Go with it. Go for it. But don't beat yourself up if you miss some of the days along the way. The other plan will be centered around the main 50 teachings of the year, where we'll give you scripture that you could build upon that'll be surrounding the weekend services. Whichever one you choose to do, I just encourage you to go for it and do it regularly. Stay in God's word. Let him speak to you, and I promise you, you will grow more spiritually connected to him and vibrant. Here's what God says about his word in James chapter 1, verse 22. It says, be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves, right? So we're going to learn God's word, we're going to ingest God's word, and we're going to apply God's word well during 2018. Can I get an amen? Amen. Be ready for this one, Hebrews chapter four, verse two. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. So many of us, we go through life without hearing God's word, without hearing his voice in our lives. We have more Bible around us than ever before, and we have less use of it than ever before. 
Come on, may this be the year that we really change that. And I promise you, if you read his word daily, he will speak to you. You're going to see stuff that you've maybe read 20 times over, and you're going to be like, wow, God had this word for me this very day. So I can't wait to see what he does in your spirit this year. The second challenge will be really physical in nature, spirit, soul, and body, right? So we want to encourage you to go back there after the service, meet those different people that are back there, those vendors, apply what the kind of things that they're telling you in their life. And if we do these things together, I promise you, we will be whole in spirit, soul, and body. I hope this journey excites you. I hope you are ready to come alongside. I hope you're ready to plug in. I hope you're ready to serve. I hope you're ready to be here in this room a year from now saying, this was the best year of my life. Would you rise with me and bow your heads and close your eyes today? Father, your word says in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, while bodily training is of some value, yes, it certainly is. We're applying that spirit, soul, and body today. Godliness is of value in every way as it holds promise for this present life and the one to come. Lord, as we gather together today, we've heard about equipping, we've heard about executing, and we certainly all want to excel. We want 2018 to be a great year. Lord, I know that I'm going to do my very best to put that first leg of that into practice, that the leadership of Journey Church, the staff, the, the elders, the others who are helping facilitate groups, every single leader of Journey Church is going to do their very best to equip us all during the course of this year in every area that we articulated today. Lord, we all have trouble in the execution part from time to time. There's some areas that we thrive and seems to come natural. There's other areas where we seem to struggle. We pray that you break through in that struggle today, Lord God. I pray especially for those who are caught in some kind of a habitual sin, that you're struggling right now, that you can't seem to overcome it, that your spirit is willing, but your flesh seems weak. We pray that God would break through this very morning and deliver you from that, that you'd have freedom from that which ails you. For those who are having to take mind-altering, mood-altering substances on a regular basis just to get by, Lord, we pray that you would break through in their lives as well, that the only thing they would need is the peace that comes from the Holy Spirit. Father, we pray that you give them great wisdom in that. We're not telling anybody to just drop your stuff off without getting counseled. No, no, no. Lord, we want wisdom in everything that we do, but we do want this year to be different. I'm not talking about a resolution. As Rob said, we want a lifestyle change for all of us. For some of you, that change really might begin with surrendering your life to Jesus. So you'll never truly have peace in this life if you're not a follower of Jesus Christ, there'll always be fear. There'll always be nervousness because there's this uncertainty that God places in the heart of every human being that never gets resolved until they surrender their life to Jesus. That may be you here today. Maybe you wouldn't call yourself a follower of Christ, but you've come into this room today and you hear God's word and something's resonating with your heart. Maybe you're ready right now to say, yes, I want to follow Jesus. Maybe you're not ready. If you're not, I want to encourage you to keep exploring God. Ask him to reveal himself. Ask him if he is true. Would he prove it into your life? Read his word and see if it doesn't come alive in your heart and mind. Continue to seek the truth that is found in him. Maybe for many of you, you are a believer in Jesus, but you feel disconnected and you feel spiritually dead right now. And you sense that today's a day that there may be some sins that you need to lay at his feet or today's a day where you need to rededicate your life to him and say, from this day forward, Lord, I will serve you and live for you all the days of my life. So I would ask for anyone who is here not to embarrass you in any way because I'd love to pray with you. If that's you and you need to dedicate or rededicate your life to God today, would you do me a favor and just raise your hand up really high right where you're at? And I see your hand and your hand. Thank you, Lord. And yours, sir. Thank you, Jesus. And yours, sir, thank you for raising your hands. And yours, sir, in the back, thank you. If you raise your hand, I wanna ask you to do something kind of bold. Again, this is not to embarrass you in any way, but if you want this year to look different than the next, I mean, you've gotta step out in faith and not in fear. If you raised your hand, I promise I'm not gonna do anything to embarrass you, but I would like to shake your hand and I'd like to pray for you. Would you come out of your seat and meet me right up here? If you raise your hand, come on up here. Everybody's gonna clap for you as they've done. If that's you and you raise your hand, come right up here. God bless you, sir. Thank you for being here. Stay right here. I'll pray for you. God bless you. Glad you're here. I know there were others. God bless you. Come right over here. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Glad you're both here. Thanks for being bold. 
God bless you. There's more. Come on. Come on, Journey. God bless you. Glad you're here. And you. God bless you. And God bless you. See, Journey, God is moving. Thank you, Lord. Father, we join with those who are bold enough to come up to the front. We thank you for their heart and their spirit. And we pray for those who are maybe a little bit nervous and we're afraid to come up to the front right now. Lord, would they even come out of their seats in just a few moments and come up and meet with one of our counselors who can give them some next steps in this journey of faith. But Lord, we just rejoice that you are alive, that you still save, that you still deliver, that you still set free, and that you still captivate hearts even today. So Lord, I am grateful for those who have come to the front and we join with them by way of faith and reaffirming or affirming our faith for the first time today by saying, Jesus, you are the son of the living God who died on a cross and rose again. We take your word as true. We believe in you with all our heart, strength, soul, and mind. And we put our hope and our trust in you and you alone. You are the one who is able to forgive. You are the one who is able to give hope. And Lord, we ask you to forgive us of our sins for they are many. Lord, we leave them at your feet and we walk from this place in newness of life. Lord, we don't want to take them with us. We want to be set free. So those who are here, would you set them free indeed this very morning, Lord God, that we would be free to live for you, that we would be free to serve you, that we would be whole in spirit, soul, and body, and that we would be blameless until you return. Lord, would you empower us for such a time as this? Would you empower us as a church to live out Vision 365, that we would be a people that boldly share our faith, that boldly proclaim what you've done in our life, that we would see this dream of seeing 365 people come to know you come to pass. Lord, would you help us to be whole and apply your word in every area of life in Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. For those who came to the front, we've got some people here who'll give you some next steps, resources. Journey Church, give them a big round of applause. Thank you so much for being here. If you're new, coming up and say hello as well. I'd love to meet you.